Hello, and uh, welcome to Leadership as a Philosophy, Not a Checklist, Case Study 3, Manufacturing. Now, like I said, if this is your first one, go watch the intro so you understand the purpose of this. This is really just a scenario about a leadership story or situation that I heard of that I think just bears an example of what happens when you don't have somebody that's in tune with being a leader in charge, or perhaps they were. I don't know. So... We'll just go right, get right to the thing. This this one might not be too long because the story is kind of simple. So basically, the scenario was uh, there's this small, very small company making collectible pottery. So it was these cool little designs, and they had different filigrees in them, and they were kind of specialized and required some special craftsmanship. Because what happened is the artist, who was also the owner, would come up with the design either make one or make a little mock-up and then give it to the production crew to knock it all out. And they were collectibles. So let me see here. Yeah, so all the employees that were part of this team were all skilled. They all knew how to do the craft. They knew how to do the working and all that sort of thing. Um, and basically, they when they got hired, they got hired because they were able to demonstrate some proficiency and what was going on. So not a bad deal. Um, now these items were limited runs. So they would do 250, maybe 300, sometimes 100. And they were all collectible basically because they were rare. And so there was a good clientele. There were plenty of customers that wanted the product. And so it was, you know, there, it was a kind of a nice little business model. The customers also knew that they were ordering handmade, custom-made things. And so they were absolutely fine waiting for the product. So sometimes the, the, drag, the lag time would be a month from the time that they showed the order till it was made and then shipped and the customer received it. But they never had any, nobody ever complained about receiving the item late. So employees are able to make the stuff customers are on board with waiting for something because it's specialized. I mean, you know, I mean, I'm the same way. I find something that's cool and rare. I'm okay waiting for it. Um, so enable to work, enable, part of the work that had to be done was kind of specialized. You had to be really good attention to detail. You had to be super focused on what was going on. And they used some luxury material. So some of the filigree might have been uh, silver wire or maybe a little bit of gold wire um, or different things, different components of these little figures. And they were using luxury goods to do that or luxury products, uh, luxury manufacturing stuff to get that made. Okay, so anytime you're working with something that requires specialized skill and is going to require... You know, if you're buying materials that are expensive, you don't want somebody to waste them. So you don't want them to rush and then waste a bunch of stuff because then there goes your margin, right? So that's the scenario. Um, the one last thing, I guess I didn't put it on here, was that the, the group that was doing all the production, there was about eight of them, and they were really tight-knit and they were really friendly and everybody got along really well and people helped each other out when somebody new came in that didn't know a certain technique. Um, they did all that. And then there was an instance where there was this one material that was super difficult to work with and one person was really good at it. And so they were the only one that did it. So they might only get six figures or six of the things done in a day because the work was super detailed and required all this precision. But none of the material was wasted either. So kind of a kind of a nice balance you got an expert doing the work and we're not wasting something that's super expensive and hard to work with great so one day management the owner and whoever the other person managing was decided they were going to measure productivity because they were thinking they were going to move stuff overseas to save money okay 
this, and I talked to two of the employees at this company, and the way that they made it sound was they had no inkling that they weren't making the goal. They were getting great reviews, customer feedback was fine, never got anything about a panic, uh, you know, stuff taking too long, nobody cared. So where does this come from? Well, I don't know, I don't know, we still don't know. <laughs> but you're gonna measure productivity, well how? Well, you're gonna have this workflow assessment sheet. So every time that you did some step, you had to stop and write down what, how long it took you to do a specific step in the process to make the item. Great. Well, what's, you know, I think you can guess where this is going already. For those of you that have been through this, because this is not uncommon to this. So everybody got paranoid because suddenly they just get a bomb dropped on them that stuff's getting, they might be outsourced overseas because we don't know why, we just know it might happen. Then everything slowed down because people had to take 10 or 15 percent longer to do stuff because after every step they had to write down how long it took. So it wasn't just, I don't even understand what the checklist was, but it wasn't even something like, hey, this is an estimate. It was, this is how long start to finish it took. So they had to start a timer and they had to put an end timer and they had to write down the thing. Well, of course that's gonna slow things down. I mean, how dumb is that? So everybody starts getting paranoid. And then the people that were the specialized ones that took the longest because they were working with the rare materials they started getting stressed out because they were only doing five items a day or six items a day. And so the boss is looking at them going, you, you're too slow, you need to speed up. Oh, okay, if I speed up, quality is gonna drop or I'm gonna start losing money. What's the thing, you can have it fast, you can have it cheap, and you can have it, you can have high quality, pick two, <laughs> right? So there's that. So then what happened? Well, the two people that were the most specialized that were working the slowest, quote unquote, because they were working with those products, left. They said, I can't stand this, it's too stressful. Suddenly the whole environment changed where the owner comes walking in, starts haranguing the people that are quote unquote slow in front of the whole team. So then the team starts slowly turning against them saying, oh, we're gonna get outsourced because of you and yeah, 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 yeah. Right, I mean, like I said, you know where this is going. So the specialized employees left, and then the company was out of business in 11 months. Okay, so that's the story. Now, let's go through the same questions that we go through all the other times. So what was the impact? So how was the employee experience in this situation? Well, obviously it was terrible. There wasn't anything wrong with what was going on before, at least as far as they knew. And then what was the customer experience? Well, the customer was perfectly fine. The customer understood they were getting as I said before, luxury product, custom, you know, it's going to be one of a kind, even though it's one of 250, it's handmade, so it's going to have slight differences in it. Um, and then, so if we're talking about production costs, what other things could have happened to save money? If you go back and watch the one that I did on Up the Organization, um, I just, I, every time I forget that guy's name, um, but the, the guy that wrote that book said, he went in one day and said, look, I need, we need to cut 30% of expenditures. And he gave it to the team and said, come to me with a plan instead of putting some other manager in charge. And the team came back and found 40% in expenditures and everybody got to keep their job. Beautiful, right? So what other ways were there to save money? Well, Ask the employees, you know, maybe maybe they were using some products that you didn't need to be the most premium product. Maybe they were using stuff that could have been done cheaper. Who knows? Nobody was ever asked as far as as far as I know from the story. Um, so what about the customer? Well, maybe you raise the prices a little bit if, if that's what it comes down to. Right. Maybe you have to add add some add some expenses or, you know, hey, here's one of the materials that you're gonna get for this level, but if you want luxury model, then you're gonna get some more prices added because you know people will, will do that. And then what other ways were there in the organization? So what, what processes could be changed? Uh, what efficiencies could have been gained? Uh, where, where could they have saved money in supplies? 
Um, how much were be people being paid at different levels? You know, none of these things were ever entertained, or at least they weren't communicated to the team. They may have been, but the person that was in charge didn't have any sort of a leadership or, or even manage business management degree. So there's no leader. There's nobody coming down saying, hey, we got to make some changes because we're losing money. I mean, I assume that because they went out of business. All right, so as we're always going to get to, what was the value and the character of the management? So what were their goals? Were their goals communicated down to the team? Doesn't sound like it. They were just happily plugging away on stuff. And then what was their intent? Was their intent to have, you know, they had never been given a deadline. You know, this needs to be done. We need to have these 250 units done in two weeks. That, that was never said. So people were just making stuff and trying to do the best they could. And then let's talk about integrity and then humility and then empathy and then vigilance, right? So if you have any integrity, you're going to go down and say, what are we trying to do or what's the goal? They didn't have the humility to ask the employees what's going on because they're the ones doing all the work. You know, what can we do to make a better product or go faster? What efficiencies could we have done? Obviously, empathy. If you know that you've got a good team and they're working well, then you've got to pay attention to what you're doing because you might disrupt stuff. And then what about vigilance? So I asked this question when I was interviewing the two people about this story. I said, when did, when, how often did management show up or how often did the artists come in to the, to the work floor, whatever you want to call it, and observe the production process? I said, never. I said, okay, great. So you've got people that are skilled but nobody came to observe and see where there were inefficiencies or where things could have been fixed or where things could have been changed. Or if pro that nobody checked. So they didn't communicate and they had no vigilance. They weren't paying attention. All right. And then identify some of the issues and possible corrections. So again, as I always say, this is just suggested stuff. I'm sure you'll come up with more if you're doing this in a small group or something. So identify some of the issues possible. Communication. All right. Do they ever have meetings to talk about production levels, profit levels, margin, any of that sort of stuff? No. As the story was told to me, they never did that. So here you've got an artist that's giving stuff out. And artists are wonderful. You need artists, right? The artist is giving them the idea. They're making the product. There's no, that wasn't fast enough. Maybe we could do a little less quality. Here's how we can speed it up. None of that. There was no communication. The only communication they had all of a sudden was, you're getting outsourced. What does that do to you, right? And then presence. So nobody was ever checking on anything ever. So you don't even know what's going on. You know, there, there could have been, I mean, this is the question that I had because that was, it's just an inherent, it's a reflexive question. You know, well, well what processes were you guys doing that could have been improved? Well, they didn't know because nobody that was the expert came in and watched what they were doing and said, oh, wow, we can save a half an hour per product if we change these two things. Try that. There was none of that because they weren't checking. So that's just the worst, worst possible thing. If you, you know, if you don't see what's going on, I go back to that example of Elon Musk, right? I've, I, I've got to try to find some articles written of him that are focused in my area let's say that because i hear that he's you know got the big picture he's the big image guy he's the big this some some weird thing some crisis happens he's suddenly sitting next to the engineer that found the problem trying to understand everything about the problem before he recommends a decision so he doesn't sit he sits way up on high but he's all over the place checking what's going on so it seems like before your if your first if your first thing is we're outsourcing well then you've messed up all of these other things. And then training. So we know the people have skill, but part of your communication and presence and take all of these things together integrity, humility, empathy, vigilance, training, presence. So maybe they needed to be taught a faster way. Maybe they needed to be taught a better way. You know, maybe maybe there was a there's something that needed to be done with the with the goal to make sure that everybody understood the deadline and then they were working towards that deadline. You know, and there was no back and forth. I mean, the communication, there's no communication from the sales floor to the artist either. Hey, you know, we were having a problem. They, they weren't given a deadline, so they didn't realize that they were missing the mark. 
And then production costs, we sort of talked about that. What material things could have been done? What what things in the process could have been changed? I mean, there's all sorts of things where you can ring, you can change the production cost through processes, through materials, through all sorts of stuff. Or, like I said, maybe you, had, maybe you were, weren't charging enough. I mean, they were selling out of every single one of their products every time they came out with something. So that means that the market's there. Maybe you were charging too little. We don't know. I don't know. The, none of these things were communicated to the two people that I talked to. And so from a purely employee perspective, you can identify all of these problems. And I think that was it. Yep, that's the end of it. So as I said, as much information as I had, talk amongst yourselves or gives you some stuff to think about or possibly you have this happening in your organization right now. You know, you, you might have managers that are sitting off in a room talking about how the employees stink and are not getting anything done, but have never come down and told you that you're not meeting a goal or meeting a deadline. Who knows? Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you like these. If you do, please leave a comment. Uh, if you've got questions or even if you've got a story of a, of a leadership type Senate situation that you would like me to talk about, uh, you can send me an email. Leadership is a philosophy at gmail.com. And we'll talk about it, and I'll put it up here. Of course, I'll take out all the particulars so nobody will fire you. Anyway, uh, thank you so much for your time, and have a great day.